The skill gap has hugely increased this season with the addition of sliding and the way that you can implement tons of mechanics to this. Raider 464 has already figured out a ton of new ways that you can utilize this for peace control and for box fighting. However, there are some things, in my opinion, you will have to learn this season, so I've put them all into this one video. When we compare just running alongside running with sliding and then also running sliding with jumping, we'll see that they're actually all just the same speed. Notice this final line that I've got. This is 10 tiles to walk across. All of these made it at exactly the same time. So you don't actually travel across flat ground any faster than just normally sprinting. I originally thought that when you started the slide, you'd gain a bit of momentum and then you slow down towards the end, but it's just literally the same speed as running. Obviously, once you get to ramps and you start going downhills, this is when it starts to get faster, but we'll come back to that later. The most basic muscle memory that you have to learn is actually just to press crouch twice. Usually when you're crouching, you can press crouch and then jump to uncrouch, which a lot of people have in their muscle memory, myself included. However, if you do this while sliding, you're just actually going to jump rather than leaving the sliding animation. So you need to make sure that you have the muscle memory down to press crouch and then uncrouch with the same button, which is not difficult muscle memory to get used to, but it is critical to make sure you don't go flying at the end of your slides. But if you're finding sliding clunky, go into the settings and go to the controller settings, yes, even if your keyboard and mouse, and turn the timer all the way down to the lowest. This will mean you have to be careful when trying to crouch and walk that you very lightly tap the button. This basically reduces the time it takes from the time you press the button before it starts sliding. So I definitely recommend putting this at the lowest and getting used to the time when you need to walk and the time when you should be able to crouch. And if initially, like me, you're trying to figure out why can I not slide in creative, you have to go to your island settings and actually enable sliding in there if you want to actually practice this in your own island, which I highly recommend. This video is part of my masterclass, which the chapter three part will be updated next week. You can go to gameplan.com slash resub to get for 20 great British pounds. And if you've already bought it, you'll get this update for free. Back to the video. So let's talk about gliding in combination with sliding. Hard to say, easy to do. When you're in the sky, all you need to do is hold down your crouch button and forward. And when you land, you will instantly start to slide. If you've got maximum forward momentum on a flat ground, you'll move about six tiles when you land from the launch pad. And obviously this slide will be an increased speed since you glide faster than you walk. The thing is you can do this with every single type of gliding because you have this increased movement speed. So even with a low pad on the same layer, just on the ground layer, you're going to slide that same six tiles, which will get you to about 60 meters more. So this can be huge in so many different situations you can even put yourself down a tarp if you're really stuck at the back side of the zone but you have a high chance of messing this up for not that much reward with a traditional low pad setup you're going to go 90 meters forward on a flat layer so you can actually do a ton of horizontal movement and there's definitely some applications for this in endgame you can even do this after using a normal drop pad which will get you 30 meters instead now some of the real applications of this are when you're landing on hills and verticality because you gain that increased movement speed while sliding you go incredibly fast so if you want to do a quick dive in particular one of the short pads onto a hill inside of a zone you're going to go so so fast Remember, you glide into the island, so even if you mess up your drop a little bit, you can instantly slide and try and grab some weapons because it will be that increased movement speed. So there's a lot of applications for this. And my favorite is when you start looking at phasing into boxes. Because you have that increased movement speed, if you have a wall that's one shot, this is obviously very difficult to set up. You can just slide straight into someone's box if you shoot it as you go through the wall. It is possible just to land two to three tiles away and start spraying the wall and you'll get straight in if you time it really, really well. But this is very, very difficult to set up properly because it's going to depend on which weapon you have and how much HP the wall is. But a phasing technique that's a lot more useful is literally just to do it on a cone. You can do this weird ramp setup where you've got a right hand peak and you can try and slide in that way. But in all honesty, this isn't very practical in an actual match and it's very easy to predict. If you just place a cone outside of someone's box, weaken the wall down to one shot and shoot it with a weapon, I don't recommend pickaxing because it's going to slow your movement down and basically make this very difficult to do. You pretty much just start running at the back side of the cone and once you get to the top of it, that's where you initiate your slide and then shoot once you hit the wall. I'd highly recommend once you've broken the wall, also trying to slide a cone inside the box. Even if you mess up the timing of the slide in, you'll almost guaranteed put a cone inside the box anyway. So even if you mess up the timing, you're going to benefit from it. Now, one of the biggest skill gaps and one of the best ways to utilize sliding is actually in endgame for tarping. If you're a tarper out there, which in duos, you're going to have to learn how to tarp. You need to learn how to tarp while sliding. Now, I'm sure there's going to be a lot more applications for it than this, but when you're changing layers, starting to go downwards, using a double ramp and sliding is so so efficient you get down so quickly if you start to put yourself at a high layer in some of these zone transitions in endgame once you see a zone going max distance you can stagger a bit stay at the further back side of the zone.
the zone. And if you're on a high enough layer, you can just slide all the way forward. And remember, once you're on a layer that you want to be and are comfortable with, you can keep sliding while tarping if you have this muscle memory down, which as you can see, I don't necessarily because it's very difficult to do. Now with this, you have to be comfortable with rotating your ramps. So for keyboard and mouse players, what I'd actually recommend is to put the rotation button on your right click. Now, if you've got changed material here, I personally have changed just the scroll wheel up, which takes a little bit getting used to, but it's not going to mess you up that badly. Pressing R to rotate your ramps is really, really awkward, but right click feels really natural while tarping. And if you want to reset the ramp rather than taking out and flipping again, you can actually just go to your weapons and then take out your blueprints again, because this will actually reset the rotation that you had and put it back to normal. So if you can get down the muscle memory of being able to flip the ramp so that you can use it to slide on, and then also just resetting it by taking out your shotgun or pickaxe again, you will tarp so much faster and you'll have much better mobility in the endgame.